Manchester United are through to the round of 16. This has come after they won away in Spain against a team which goes by the names of Villarreal. And there, remember, there has been a very bad record in between Villarreal and Manchester United because the entire five times they had made before this season, all those times have been draws. Even the recent one when they made into the UEFA Europa League finale. The game ended 1-1. Remember, it's on cover and is scoring in there. Gerard Moreno scoring in from a team which goes by names of Vera Real. But United, the two tied, United have won them. The first one, they won it by two goals to one. At Old Trafford, it was a late winner. But this time round, they came in through and scored that goal that gave Ronaldo. It was a very good press from Freddy and it found Ronaldo and Ronaldo dinked it over the goalkeeper of a team which goes by the names of Villarreal and United got the lead. Sancho doubled the lead I think around the 80 81 minute in there. Very nice team play between Freddy, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford and Ronaldo and Bruno really was responsible for that assist in there. So welcome to the Football News Top 10s and Left Zone. Please how are you and where are you watching us from? This is the Football News Top 10s and Left Zone. We bring you the match reaction of Villarreal 0, Manchester United 2 in there. You know, in this game, we saw surprises in there where Dan Van Bink started in there as a central attacking midfielder in the number 10 role. Sancho also started on the right wing. Uh, Martial started, by the way, was given a start. And by the way, to me, I really think that Martial played very well. He did he did the hold-up play very well with Cristiano Ronaldo. It was really very well played between Martial and a man who goes by the names of by the names of 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 Ronaldo in there because they used to interplay. Ronaldo used to switch left and Martial switched played as a center forward. Whenever Ronaldo switched as a center forward, Martial used to switch to play as a left attacking midfielder in there. So I think they had a very good game plan in there though. Villarreal really attacked United. They passed them off. Their press was really poor. You saw Ronaldo and Marcel telling them, let's let's go and press them. But because they know that they're having two slow central defenders in the names of Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof, they don't want to play a high line. Remember, a high line is it's a play where you suffocate your opponent. You get in his half. Your, 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 your... Your, your central defenders play almost on the half line, on the arc of the half line in there. That's where they play in there. So because they know that these are snails in there, they say no, no way to give them the press in there. And you see, because of the press that Freddy did, it resulted into an assist and Ronaldo scored in there. Even that ball that, even that ball that United scored, the second goal, it was Freddy and the entire team pressing Villarreal because Villarreal had opened themselves up and bang into a counter-attack and Sancho scored his first goal for Manchester United in there. And Sancho has been named the man of the match even to me. I really give it to him because he played very well in there. But there are players that I really feel like they need more playing time like Alex Telles because each and every time Luke Shaw gets injured when you are not giving, you are not, you are not rotating them very well, Telles and, 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 and Shaw, if you don't rotate them very well, that means you are costing yourself. You are costing yourself a result because you bring in Alex Neles going forward is okay, but defensively is not that okay because defensively means that you must be playing regular football. You get such that you keep your fitness up because Teles is a good defender and you've seen him, his accuracy is reducing and his confidence is reducing because he's not being given playing time by the Manchester United manager who was sacked, who goes by the names of Oliver Nasrosha. But I think rotation needs to be improved at Manchester United. Danny Van Beek needs to get more playing time. Harry Maguire needs to be rested. I think Eric Bay should be playing into these games because in the game against in the weekend game he's not going to play against a team which goes by the names of Chelsea. But I really understand why the manager did it because a man who knows by the names of Eric Bay is an injury prone player. You need him on Sunday against a side which goes by the names of Chelsea. But remember, if at all he gets an injury in this, you'll be left with only one central defender that you trust because the rest are not trusted. Phil Jones is not trusted. Imagine Phil Jones. I think he's going to make he's going to be on the bench when United is playing a team which goes by names of Chelsea because Harry Maguire is suspended. Rafael Veran is not yet back. 
So that means you only have Linderoff, Eric May, and Phil Jones is going to be onto the bench. I know even Mengi might make it because I think, but I think Phil Jones will be enough and Diego Tellot, they'll be in there waiting to see what they do for Manchester United. But all in all, Danny Van Vink was suffocated because on the other channel of Manchester United that I really do run called Manchester United Matters Channel, when I was really analyzing the lineup that they brought in, I told people that. Danny Van Bink has been put to play as a number 10 role or a central attack midfielder behind Ronaldo. But I'm very much worried of where he's going to get the supply. And he did get it. Freddie didn't supply the ball to him. Scott McTominay didn't do it. So I really feel like he's supposed to be playing alongside Freddie in the double midfield pivot in the central axis, then Bruno should be playing ahead of him, all one matter, because for him, he can get that ball from the defenders and release it, and it was hard for a team which goes by the names of, of Manchester United to pass the ball through the central axis in there, so I really feel like such things should be really improved in there, but all in all, United is through to the round of 16, as you see that table in there, as things run there in in young boys, young boys, Atlanta is leading them by two goals to one, and United has already made 10 points. And even if United loses against a team which goes by the names of young boys, which I think it's not going to happen, United is going to come and smash them out. That's what I really think is going to happen in between a team which goes by the names of Manchester United and young boys in there, because we are really waiting for that to happen but united is having 10 points and if at all they win against young boys they'll top the group with 13 points why do they need to top the group because when you look at teams like benefica because it looks like barcelona is out if at all they fail to win this one they are tied with benefica with with six points each now they're going to be having seven barcelona is playing its last game at the rians arena in germany against bayern munich you know what it means because the last time they played Bayern took Barcelona to school in there. So this time round, I think they're out. They are going to play in the UEFA Europa League. That means the likes of Benfica, Juventus, and I think we can get weak, weak teams in there. Um, I think PSG is going to top the group because tomorrow I think they're going to get a result at the City, the Etihad Stadium in there. And I really feel like that is really going to happen. And PSG are really going to get a result. At Man City, either a draw or a win, because I feel like Man City is not yet sharp to that level. So, United needs to top this group so that they can play teams like Benfica, Juventus, um, Atletico Madrid. Because I really feel like if you're playing such teams, United can really gate of them. They have the quality to go through to the quarterfinal because the only thing that has been bridging them behind was the manager and if at all they get a new manager i think they're really going to come up and do the deal full and win and they can even play the semi-finals even the finals i really believe that so united have won ronaldo scoring first sancho scoring and make it two for united uh danny van bing played close to 60 minutes taken off and martial were substituted by bruno fernandez and marcus rashford in there but David De Gea, let me talk about him. I had forgotten to talk about him. David De Gea made three spub saves that would have been goals on any other day. First half, he did two saves that were really world class. And in the second half, he really pulled up one that was really world class in there. So if it was not David De Gea in these games that have been playing in the Champions League and the Premier League, I don't know where the Premier League United would have been. And in the Champions League, I don't know whether United would have been in there. Because in this game of Villarreal, he did two fan three fantastic saves that saw United not concede goals in there because the defenders were really throwing that ball very, very much. Scott McTominay, not really, not really. He is not a player to start at Manchester United. United need a CDM because all this game, they've been very poor, especially into that CDM. Remember, even David De Gea was forced not to start that ball to the defenders because he knew it's a calamity. Because if at all you start, the, the defenders are confident on the ball, but who is going to come and meet that ball? Danny Van Bink would have come and meet it and received it and passed it past the midfield in the central axis was played as a number 10. And that called for Scott McTominay and Freddie to come on. You've seen Scott McTominay and Freddie. They pass sideways. They pass sideways. They don't pass through the middle axis. Their pressing is poor. You get, they are not confident enough. And to me, I really feel like it's really bad to see to it that United is being behaved this way. And the new manager at Manchester United, not the interim, I've heard that they're being Valverde, 
If at all he does not get a central defensive midfielder, United won't even get to where we're supposed to be because we are really bad and looking poor. If you there, smash the like button, comment and share. Your reaction to United going through to the round of 16 is welcome into the comment section below. I go by the names of Rokan David aka RD. That has been my, my reaction to this. But all in all, United has won. They've won and they only played 20 minutes very well and the entire 70 minutes we are dominated by a team which goes by the names of by the names of you're dominated by a team which goes by names of Villarreal but United pedigree really got them great and the press of Freddy that really resulted into an assist Ronaldo to link the goalkeeper into the back of the net really saw United go ahead and Villarreal opened up itself and guess what happened? Villarreal are now out because I don't think they're going to get a result at Atalanta. No, Atalanta has eight points. The Atalanta just needs a draw. They just need a draw and I don't know whether United Emery can really open up. But you never know, he might be having the Chipoquezes will be back, the Gerard Morenos will be back, the Sagi Orios will be back. Now all those three players that I've mentioned have not played this game of football because they are having a long time injury. So let's expect that in the next two weeks, they will be back because Champions League is going to be back in the next two weeks. I'm out for now. Barcelona looks like they're out because they are now third and they have to pray to it that when Benfica's last game either draws or loses and they have to go to Bayern Munich to get a result, something that is hard for them. That's what I had for you in here. Your reactions are welcome into the comment section below. This is the Football News Top 10s and Lifestyle Zone.